Good morning. I don't know if we all need to synchronize our watches, but I, I think we're actually a half a minute ahead of ourselves, but that's good. Um, those who come first and stay the longest get extra points. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to give thanks and welcome our guest organist or our guest um, musician this morning, April Massey is blessed to be here in spite of some early morning traffic dilemmas with a bike race that was happening. Is that Scarborough? I saw that when I drove down the highway, I could see them going over the bridge, but it was OOB, okay. It's a what? Oh, the Iron Man, okay. Well, the Iron Man was preventing some car traffic this morning. So we're glad that April is with us for the service today. And we're glad that each of you is here as well. Hi. We are an open and affirming congregation where ever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we give thanks for your presence today. We also want to welcome those who are online streaming, although maybe mostly audio streaming today. We welcome your presence as well, and we're very glad that we're able to take this time to be together this morning. An important announcement. This coming Thursday, the 30th of August, the parking lot will be closed right out here for restriping on that morning, and it will stay closed until the paint dries. There's a thing about how long does it take for the paint to dry? Well, that depends on the weather and a lot of other things. So please be prepared to either park down the street or on the road, and hopefully everything will be all back to regular by Sunday, mor uh, Sunday morning next week. At this time, I would invite us to take a nice deep breath and realize what a blessing it is for us to be able to be here together this day as we might begin our worship. If you would be willing to sign the pew pad at the end and sign your name and pass it on down the line, we'd like to know that you were here today. Let us begin our worship. Will all who are able please stand and join me in our responsive call to worship. Praise be to God who reigns above the heavens. Praise be to God who dwells within our hearts. Let the majesty of creation worship in reverence. Let us love Christ with our hearts our minds, our spirits. Come, let us be filled with the spirit of the living God.
Let us continue with our unison prayer of invocation. We thank you, living God, that in Jesus Christ, you have built a house not made with hands, but a place in our hearts where you reside. We thank you that you have called us and that we belong to you. We come now longing to know the touch of your spirit that we may be smitten and made whole. Come to us that we may recognize you even in unlikely places and be empowered to serve you in the world through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. The congregation may be seated. And um, I'm going to sneak a little story in right now, if that's OK. So I'd like to invite any, all of the children who are here today, if they would come on down. And I'm going to share a special story. Theo here, who's agreed to help me, and I've got some other friends too, it's so nice to see. Come on down over here, so you'll be able to see this. Where's Pete? No Pete? He's where? He's up there? Okay, that's all right. So I have this wonderful story that I would like to share with you all today. It's called, Couldn't We Make a Difference? And Theo's going to help me by holding this, oops, excuse me, holding this book open and turning the pages, because I'm pretty good at reading, but I'm only half as good at reading upside down. So that's why I'm thinking if you guys come around a little bit, you might be able to see the pictures a little bit more. But so you're gonna, why don't you sit up here with me, hon? And then that way you can hold this side, we can go this way. There we go. And I'm going to try to read this sideways as well. So here's a beautiful picture of some children outside. It's, I think it's at sunrise in the morning, and there's a big green tree, and it says, Couldn't we sit down together for a while under a tree? We could watch the clouds or look at the stars. Just think how nice it would be. If we could look at each other with eyes that see within, we'd look past unimportant things like color, clothes, and skin. We'd see we're not so different, and wouldn't it be fine if I could walk in your shoes and you could walk in mine? Couldn't we talk to each other instead of having a fight? Forget about who's to blame. Forget who's wrong or right. Then we could really listen to what each of us has to say. We might find we understand why we might find a way to share our secret thoughts and dreams ideas and feelings too. I think that I could learn a lot listening to you. Couldn't we play together and wouldn't it be fun if to our surprise no one lost and everybody won? We wouldn't ever have to prove by race or time or test who's stronger faster, smarter, bigger, or the best. Couldn't we build together a castle, a fort, and then, you never know, I bet it's so, perhaps we'd wind up friends. That looks like a pretty good fort, doesn't it? The waterfall and all in there. Together, we could fix it. Yes, that's what we'll do. We'll paint it, clean it, patch it right up. Why, it'll be good as new. What's this? The earth, yes. I don't know the earth. 
a little bit? I live on Earth. You live on Earth? They, I think that's very important. We're all here right now together, but you never know. By the time you grow up, you could be going back and forth to the moon for work every day. Some of us don't want to think about that, <laughs> but you never know. So there is a job that's ours, you know, one of unbounded worth. Let's hold this so these girls over here can see too. That's a little better. To care for mountains, sea, and sky, and creatures of the earth. Then, couldn't we help each other to walk or climb or stand? I could give you a leg up, and you could give me a hand. They're, crawling, they're, they're doing a good job. Couldn't we love one another when we're tired, hungry, or cold? I'd care for you. You'd care for me when we're lost or troubled or old. Okay. You, you, listen, you listen, you'll hear the rest. Couldn't we live together? We really must decide. There could be sweet peace on earth if we lived side by side. Each of us could have a say. We all have the right, you see, to share a voice heard around the world that says, all of us are free. Couldn't we? Shouldn't we? Just think of how nice it would be if just one moment all of us believed that we could. Couldn't we? So that we could all make a difference together. Thank you so much for coming up and helping me with this story. I think sometimes grown-ups as well as kids feel like there's a lot of things that are hurting in the world, and what could we do to help make a difference? And this is a nice little story that helps me remember that if we listen to each other, spend time with each other, and work together, we can do all kinds of great things on the earth for God. Thank you very much. You can go back with your families now. Thank you, Jim.
the epistle lesson this morning is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. You will find it on page 172 in the New Testament section of your Bible. This letter, although it's addressed to the church in Ephesus, was probably a circular letter. That is, there were several copies of it available and it was sent to churches around Asia Minor. And it was written probably by Paul while he was in prison in Rome. Listen for God's word now as we read from the sixth chapter of the, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but, uh, or, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God so that we may be able to withstand on that evil day and have done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten on the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet. Put on whatever makes you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, which with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in that spirit in all times and in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert. Always persevere in supplication to all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare boldly as I must speak. This is God's word as proclaimed by the Apostle Paul. Thank you, Carl. Our second reading comes today from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, most of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are, are, are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. 
The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold for those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. Here end these readings from God's holy word, given that we might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Well, they say that things get better as time goes on and things progress. But you see, when I was growing up, I was aware that frequently in the summertime, the minister might not be there for a whole month at a time. Some churches in communities would have everybody go to the Methodist church in July, and then everybody would go to the Congregational Church in August. That way, each of the pastors would get their month's vacation, but people would still be able to go to church, but it would make space for everyone to have some time off. Well, back in those days, pastors traditionally lived in parsonages, right, where the church would have a house for the minister to live in while they were there. Well, what was the other half of this part of this situation was that frequently pastors would find themselves a little spot somewhere that they loved. It could be on the shore or the coast in Maine. It could be up in the mountains. It could be just about anywhere. But the pastor would go with their family for that chunk of time in the summer, and usually with some little cabin that they enjoyed being at. And then by the time retirement rolled around, they would have squirreled away enough to kind of maybe winterize that cabin, and then they'd have a place to retire to. That's the way it was a long while ago. And so I was blessed when I was serving a church in Everett, Washington, that one of the former ministers, who had long since passed away, but his wife was still there, offered me a whole week at a lovely little cottage on Lopez Island out there in the San Juan Islands off the coast of Seattle in that whole big, beautiful, wonderful area. So I had been there a few days, had, you know, it was one of those little tiny island towns where when you drive down the road, everybody just puts up one finger to say hello. That's how they do the little wave there, was kind of the Lopez hello. So you'd be driving along, and you'd see somebody doing this, and after a while you kind of thought, okay, I guess I should do that too. It was kind of like this unspoken language that people of that area knew what was going on. Suddenly, I knew what I felt, but I didn't have a word for it. What made the children so charming and vibrant and what made the adults so open and relaxed. It was a palpable good feeling that you felt in the air. Koinonia. Finally, I understood koinonia. Koinonia is a Greek word, an ancient Greek word, that's used extensively in the New Testament. It's one of those words for which there's no direct translation into English. I remember seeing the diagram on the board at Yale Divinity School where 
you'd have all these different words that kind of made it up in this little tiny area where they overlapped in the center. And the arrow that went out to say koinonia. Frequently, it's translated as community or fellowship. I had ex accepted that definition at Yale and thought, OK, there's a little more to it, but community fellowship, that's good, moved on. But here I was in the midst of a real life experience that all of a sudden I knew this was koinonia. I think one of the reasons why I resonated so much with the mood at Carol's house was because so many times before, I had felt it in outdoor ministry sites at church camp and in, also in local congregations. But somehow, I was the outsider being welcomed in. Frequently, I would be the host or the hostess where the people would come into the church or the camp. But here I was, the outsider, and yet I was being warmly welcomed with open arms even though nobody knew me at all. Oh, they knew I was staying at Ruth's place, but other than that, they didn't know me at all. Here I was, an outsider being welcomed in, and I had this incredible perspective on this ineffable feeling, this presence. I was a temporary pilgrim, you might say, in an experience of life's essence. And suddenly, I knew. Now, the word community really means any cohesive group of people. You can have community without the warmth that I was feeling at Lopez. The word fellowship isn't really enough either. Going bowling with the guys is fellowship. Hanging out at the water cooler at the office is fellowship. But this was something more. It was the fellowship that came from the inspired spirit that filled that community, koinonia. Why am I sharing this story with you? Because as a church, we have an opportunity to be more than just a community. We can be more than just a community of faith. We must be rich in the life-affirming, subtle, and extensive work, essential work, of building koinonia here in this place. It implies more than Sunday morning pleasantries. It means going out of our way to tell and to listen to each other's stories, to set apart sacred time, to be a family that will, as Paul says it in Ephesians, be wrapped in the garment of God. For when we put on the whole garment, the truth of righteousness, the faith and gospel of peace, then we will be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all our hearts, always and forever, giving thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a sense of priority that reveals that the church is wherever the people are establishing God's koinonia. So yes, it may be in a physical building of the church, or it may be at a community field, it may be praying for a friend, it could be in a cathedral a thousand years old. It is this spiritual essence that pervades in such a way that you are at odds to find the words to express it. But when you are in the midst of it, you know it, you feel it. 
Hopefully, all of you have had some opportunity this summer to renew and refresh yourselves a bit. I don't even want to think about turning my thoughts toward fall, even though next week's Labor Day, and like it or not, the kids are going back to school, so that's the direction we're going. But I want to encourage us, as we think about moving into our fall program year and the good work that we do here in this place, that we can even further deepen and enhance the life-giving spiritual essence, koinonia, right here in this church, in this place. Now there's going to be lots of great social things that take place. We have our bean suppers, we have our book club, we have choir rehearsals will be starting up. There are so many things that we do in this place through mission, through service, through caring that are the life's blood of this congregation. And yet I believe we can be called to even a deeper understanding of how it is we live with one another moving to a deeper level where that spiritual essence calls us to something even more than we know how to say, koinonia. We have all been given many gifts in our lives. I certainly am very blessed as well. But how is it that sometimes we get beyond the little things that can trip us up and step back and really listen to one another's stories. Storytelling is going to be a theme for the denomination as we go forward in terms of listening and telling stories. The annual meeting of the main conference of the UCC will be held here at the end of October. <clears throat> and the theme for that gathering event is telling our stories. And so I think that sometimes we forget that at the roots of our tradition, at the beginnings of our community of faith, there were communities, spiritual communities, meeting around campfires and telling the stories of our ancestors in faith. Hearing those stories over and over was a crucial part of how our faith began even before we could write things down. So I would like to invite you to think about the ways in which as we go out and into the world that we put on that whole armor of God. When we go out and we anticipate that perhaps we might be facing a situation where people are not agreeing, where there are different energies and perceptions and perspectives that somehow need to be drawn together? Are those the places where we can put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, and I love the part about, and whatever shoes will help you to proclaim the gospel of peace? I'm thinking of how many really variations on shoes did they have back then? Not quite what's in my closet, but I would like to think about when I put on each different pair of shoes that there is a new way that I can go out and speak the gospel of peace. A little grand, perhaps, when I get dressed in the morning, but a good way to focus my intention. I don't know about you. Let us take these last days as we continue to enjoy the summer, the warm weather, a little bit leisurely time even before everything kicks into high gear, that as we share those stories of what we've done this summer when we come back together and share it, that we can know we are about creating an even deeper connection with one another and with God who empowers our love our service, and our mission in this place. We pray that we might develop the full community of God's spirit here. Thanks be to God. Amen.
be seated. As we continue in our worship, during this prayer time, we like to lift the names of those that we might know who are in special need of prayers today. They may be prayers for thanksgiving and celebration, or they may be prayers for healing or strength or courage. Please share with me your prayers for today. Rosemary. The day after Labor Day, my friend Bev Stoops is going to have major surgery. I ask for prayers for courage and strength and healness. It's a very major surgery. They're going to replace her hip and extend her leg, which is pretty, pretty revolutionary. Wow. So lots of Thank prayers you so and thoughts. Much and she's a doctor, so she knows everything. <laughs> that can be kind of a double-edged sword, can't it, for nurses and doctors? Well, I'm very glad to know, and we will be holding you in prayers in these coming days. And then certainly, is that Labor Day Monday? The day after. Well, thank you very much, and we will continue to hold you in prayers, Beverly. Thank you. Yes, Linda. Prayers for guidance and love and protection for our grandson, Dylan, as he enters the Army on Tuesday. Prayers ongoing for Dylan and for his family. Thank you. Yes, and for peace. Yes, Brenda. Prayers for my friend, Charlie Walker, who comes to church here every Sunday. He's having some serious health issues. Thank you. Prayers for Charlie. Thank you, Rosemary. Yes, Carl. Thank you. I have two prayers, uh, three prayers actually, two for healing and one for celebration. Prayers for my brother-in-law, Richard Stevens in North Carolina, who is having cancer surgery. May he have a complete recovery. Yes. And our dear friend Barbara Coleman in Wyndham is continuing to slowly recover from heart surgery. Thank so you. she needs to have our prayers. But I also want to celebrate the birthday of our youngest granddaughter, Sophie, who will have her 12th birthday and preteen she was the only one who isn't a teenager or an adult yet. So Sophie needs to have our prayers of celebration. Thank Indeed. you. Thank you very much. All those prayers. Thank you. Yes. Uh, prayers for our family. Um, my uncle Richard died yesterday morning. Um, so um, we're holding my father, Eric, and his sister, Ingrid, in our prayers and pulling everybody close. Uh, he's a beloved member of our family, and um, it's a tough time for us. Also, uh, we go back to school tomorrow, so strength for the teachers and a bit of birth, I don't know, maybe soccer too, I don't know. So uh, a lot going on. I'm so sorry to hear about your uncle's passing, so that you and your family, as well as your extended family, might know and remember that in life and in death, we hold fast to the promises of the gospel, and may you feel the comfort of God's care let us know if there's anything that we can do. And yes, for all those who are going back to school tomorrow in Biddeford and in Saco and wherever else they may be, that they might have a good school year, safety, and um, a year full of learning. Yes, Glen Ellen. Prayers of celebration, my oldest granddaughter will turn 32 on the 27th of August. My oldest great-granddaughter will turn seven on the 29th of August. Wow, congratulations. Those are lovely celebrations. Thank you. Yes, Tom. I have uh, two prayers. One um, on August 11th was 34 years of marriage. So I give thanks to uh, not only to God, but to the many people that have guided us and uh, supported us through um, the years. And, Congratulations, uh, yeah, Mary thank you, and Tom. thank That's you, lovely. and uh, I'm also thankful that my dad is here, and um, just grateful for the time that we can share. Indeed, for for summer journeys and time together with family, and congratulations again. 
Thank you so much. Absolutely. I mean, I can never top what you say, Linda. So you have that right where it is. Thank you. I know he wasn't saying a whole lot about um, Mary in there, but that's certainly the other half of that 34 years. Indeed. Yes, in the balcony, Jack. I have two prayers for the uh, family of Iowa college student Molly Tibbetts, the search for whom came to an unfortunate end this past week. Yes. And also prayers for John McCain yeah. and his family who served his country bravely in war and with bipartisan spirit in Congress. Thank you very much. Yes, prayers for both of those that we are aware of on a wider national scene. Thank you. Yes, Allison. Hi, um, I'd like to ask for prayers for my mother. Um, she received a difficult diagnosis this week, um, and so I'd ask for prayers of strength and also of uh, healing for her. Yes, strength and courage and healing. Thank you. Yes. Um, yes. From Sue Burgess. Uh, prayers of thanksgiving for a new home and for those who helped with the move and prayers of healing for sore muscles. And who was the last one? For, oh, sore muscles. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So congratulations to Sue and Bill and thanksgiving for their new beginning in their new home. Lovely. Friends, we know that God knows the prayers that are in our hearts, those that we speak out loud, and those that we are brave enough to hold in our hearts. Let us continue now in a spirit of prayer. Loving and creative God, we are so blessed to be together here in this space, this sanctuary and this place of action and mission. We ask for your continued blessing to be upon First Parish and especially for the search committee and for the pastor that is even yet now being lifted up through your care, gracious God. Help the discernment to continue steadily. Help faithfulness to lead the way and we pray that in all things we might seek to discern your will we give thanks for all those whose names have been lifted this day prayers for healing prayers for courage prayers for strength for those who are waiting for diagnosis for surgery for healing, we pray that your presence would enfold them and it strengthen them. We pray that each of us, as we look around in our lives, that we might seek to serve you in a way that your love, gracious God, would be the defining factor of how we order our lives. We pray that in small and large things, we would strive to be people who are peacemakers, acknowledging the need for justice and compassion as your grace flows throughout. Holy One, there are so many places in our world where violence, where poverty and breach of relationship has left societies in tenuous and very scary places. We pray for our own country as we seek to have unity, as we seek to be a caring and continually strident people that we might know that in all the things that we do, we do make a difference. As we continue, Holy One, we pray that you would also meet the needs of each one, 
those who are struggling with addiction issues, those who struggle with issues of mental health, and those who are awaiting, not sure what their future will hold, but secure in your love and care. We pray these and all things in Jesus' name and join now with the words that he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us take a few moments now to think of all of the blessings that we have so richly received, and let us make our offerings to the work of this church in this place. Our morning offering will now be received. Let us pray together. Generous God, thank you for the blessings you bestow upon us daily. For every gift we have received, including the gift of faith, we give you thanks. 
Open our hearts in generosity and humility that we may be eager to share what we have and serve you in ways both large and small. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Friends, as we go forth this day, may the great ruler of all high places, God of many names, touch you with a wind that keeps you strong for all your days to come. Go now with the blessing of God, who is creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.